How to Record Audio Podcasts with Audacity for Windows is part of a series of online demonstrations of material that can be found on the CL Open Resource Repository. In this workshop, we'll explore tips before you begin, what is Audacity, how to use Audacity, adjusting recording levels and channels, recording, basic editing, saving your project, exporting your audio as MP3, uploading your MP3 to Learn, and linking your MP3 to your page in Learn. So some tips before you begin. For best results, recording should be done in a carpeted room or a room with a large area rug. If that's not your current reality, that's okay. You could put down a large comforter or some pillows on the floor. Really what we're looking to do is to dampen the noise, which is gonna help reduce the room echo. Uh, you also want to eliminate background noises such as fans or lights. And try to select a time of day when children, pets are more likely to be quieter inside the home so you can really aim to reduce the amount of background noise and distractions that could be picked up during your recording. Any other devices in the room that you aren't using for recording should be muted or powered off so that doesn't introduce any additional noises or hums from electronics into your recording. In terms of recording accessories, we recommend that you use an external microphone or one that's part of a headset. Built-in microphones can pick up sounds of your computer fan, so an external microphone is really the better choice. Doesn't need to be anything super expensive or sophisticated. The headset that I'm using right now was recently purchased off Amazon around the $40 mark, and I found the quality actually is quite good. So now that you've got your recording accessories worked out, you'll need to ensure that they're connected and set up properly so that Audacity knows which device to serve as your microphone and which device should serve as your playback for recorded audio. So to do this, we're gonna make sure your microphone and headphones are plugged into your computer. And on your PC, you're gonna search for sound settings. And this will come up. And you're gonna see you have an option to select your output device, which is currently set to my headset, and my input device, which again is set to my headset, so the microphone on my headset, and you can see that my audio is getting picked up here. So now that I've got my recording accessories all set up and ready to go, it's time to open Audacity. So here it is, and what is Audacity? Audacity is a multi-track audio recorder and editor. And while it comes with several features and tools, we're really only gonna focus on the most relevant to audio podcast recording to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Audacity is free and can be downloaded from audacityteam.org. So let's take a closer look at the Audacity interface. So I'm just gonna draw your attention here. You can see that my microphone is set to the input device. It's the same microphone that I set in the Windows sound settings. Next to that, you can see that my channels are set to mono. Mono is actually the uh, recommended recording channel for a single source audio recording like what I'm doing right now. And uh, there's no real reason to have it in stereo. It will also result in a smaller file size. So I'm gonna leave this at mono. And then next to that, you can see my output device. So this is the device that would play back my audio when I listen back to my recording. In the upper left, you can see our recording controls. There's pause, play, stop, jump backward, jump forward and record. We have some additional editing controls here. We'll look at a couple of these in more detail in just a moment. And we're gonna move over here to this monitoring section. So before I start my actual recording, I wanna make sure my recording levels are set properly to ensure that my audio is coming into Audacity at an optimal level. So that's not too quiet and not too loud. So to monitor my recording levels, I'm just gonna go ahead and click to start monitoring. So you might notice here that the recording meter stays green until the signal reaches minus 12 decibels, after which point it turns to yellow and then red. Minus 12 to minus six is ideal, though most recordings can be well below minus six and still have a decent volume. Really what we want to avoid are signals coming in over minus six. This is too loud and may result in distortion. So I'm gonna speak into my microphone 
and I can adjust the recording level using the slider next to the microphone on the mixer toolbar, which would be this right here. So I actually don't need to make much adjustments. When I talk loud, you can see it exceeds that. So maybe I'll just bring it down a little bit. So I think this is maybe just a touch higher there. I think this is, yes, it's, it's going right in between minus 12 and minus six. So I would say that's an optimal level. So now with our recording level set, I recommend doing a quick test run before jumping into your full audio recording. So we're going to go ahead here and press the record button and we're going to speak into the microphone and you should see the waveform building on the timeline as I'm speaking. So I've pressed record and this is my audio file test that I'm recording into Audacity. And I'll press stop. Now that I see the waveform is built in my project, we want to inspect it just to see that the middle line is centered on zero and it never reaches a maximum amplitude of one or minus one on the graph. So this recording is centered on zero and we see that it does not exceed one or minus one. So I'm going to move my cursor to the start of the recording and hit play to hear the playback. And I'm going to monitor the levels in the playback meter as I do this. So like the recording meter, we want the playback meter to ideally be between minus 12 and minus 6 decibel range. I'm going to go up top and press play. So I've pressed record and this is my audio file test that I'm recording into Audacity. So you may have noticed during playback that the recording was falling nicely in between minus 12 and minus 6. Test that I'm recording into Audacity. So we have set our levels properly and we're actually ready to start our real recording. It's just a matter of clicking on the record button just like we did in the demo and that will start the recording. We also have the pause button so if I need to stop partway through my recording I can press pause and then pause again to resume it or I can press stop, which will stop the recording altogether. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. Welcome to my workshop on Audacity for Windows. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll notice that I took a moment to clear my throat in that recording, but I'm not gonna stress out about it. I know that I can edit that out, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment here. Okay, so let's get into some basic editing. Once you've stopped your recording, you can click on the selection tool in the top toolbar, which is right here, and use it to highlight the area on your WAV file that you wish to delete. So if you remember, I cleared my throat right around here. Windows, <clears throat> excuse me. So I want to I want to delete this section of audio right here. So with my selection tool, I can put my cursor where I'd like to delete drag it over. I'm going to actually delete this whole end section here and I can select, I can just press delete on my keyboard and it's going to cut it right out. So when I play that back, Audacity for Windows. It's gone. I'm just going to undo that for a second here. I can also choose to cut using the scissors. which might be useful if I've recorded something out of order and it's going to save it in a clipboard and it's going to allow me to paste. So I could actually put my cursor here at the beginning and paste that in. Now we know that this is me clearing my throat, <clears throat> so I don't want that there. So I'm going to undo that and I'm just going to leave my recording as is here. I'm going to trim up this beginning a little bit to highlight and I'm going to press delete on my keyboard. Welcome to my workshop on Audacity for Windows. So there we have it. So I'm quite happy with that recording. So I'm going to go ahead now and save my project. In the file menu, I'm going to click to expand. I'm going to go save project and save project as. I'm going to call it test audio and press save. So my project is now saved. 
and it's just a matter now of exporting this WAV file as an MP3. I'm going to go up to File and Export, Export as MP3. MP3 is the recommended format for posting audio in Learn courses and on the web generally. This format generates small file sizes and is playable by a wide range of devices and applications. So let's go ahead and export our file. I'm going to save it to the same folder and keep the name Test Audio. I'm going to press Save. OK, I'm going to go ahead and open my Audacity folder. Just make sure our test is saved there. There it is. And I'm going to open that up. Welcome to my workshop on Audacity for Windows. And there we have it. So I have my MP3 all ready to go and to upload into my course and learn. Okay, so I'm just going to bring learn up now. And here's my course. So there are a few ways to upload and link your content in Learn. We do recommend creating a quick link, which I'll demo to you right now. So I'm going to go up to Course Admin. And Manage Files. I've already gone ahead and created an audio folder just to keep my audio separate from my HTML pages in my course and other files. So I'm going to open up audio and click upload and upload again. And there's my test. I'm going to click open and save. And now my audio, my MP3 has been saved to my course and learn. So the last thing I need to do is link to this file from my page. So I'm going to go to content and I have a page already ready to go. And I'd like to link to my MP3 file right here in my content section. So I'm going to go edit HTML and I want it to go right here. So I'm going to click on the insert quick link tool in the learn editor. I'm going to go to course file into my audio folder and there is my mp3. So before I click on it, if I click on it right now, it's going to actually name my link, the name of the file itself. So I'd like to modify that. So I'm going to click on options and here is my link name. So I'm going to call it test audio and I'm going to have this set to open in a new window so that when a student clicks on that link, the audio will open up in a new window and play with the default media player that is native to their device. So I'll press insert and there is my link. It's also nice to include the file format to set student expectations, what type of file they're opening. So I have MP3 in brackets behind as well as a time code for the audio to set expectations of how long it will take them to move through material. So if I go back to the file on my computer where my mp3 lives here, I'm going to look at content and I see the length is only three seconds. So I will go and add that to my page. I'm just going to put that it's under one minute and I'm going to hit save and close. So there's my link and when I click, this should open in a new window. Welcome to my workshop on Audacity for Windows. And there's my audio file. I'd like to thank you for your interest in this workshop. Please visit the links that we provided on the Open Resource Repository page for more information about this workshop, as well as other workshops that may be of use to you in creating your course content.